Hello and welcome to another lesson with Mr. D. Mr. D here, teaching you lessons from home. How fantastic is that? Um, I hope you're all enjoying uh, these lessons and I hope they're useful. Remember, the lessons are solely for you guys, uh, for you to, you know, to keep you busy, to give you something to do, to help um, whoever's at home looking after you, um, structure your day a little bit. I've got Nora in the background giving it some welly, so um, I do apologise if I lose my train of thought because um, she's taken over my mind at the moment. Um, as I was saying, the, the lessons are completely for you there. You know, if you want to send me in the work that you're doing to show me, then that's fine. If you don't want to, that's also fine. There's literally um, no expectation around the work. It's, it's for you guys to keep you busy keep your brains ticking over whilst we're in this lockdown period. If you're still on week one and can still see my hair out to here, that's fine as well. Pick and choose these lessons. If you don't like these lessons, wait for the next one. Or if you're doing something else, um, keep doing what you're doing. Um, yeah, just want to make it clear that you know I'm not waiting for people to send stuff in. If you want to, that's absolutely fine. I love seeing your stuff. I like seeing that you're keeping busy and that you're enjoying it. If it's too tricky or it's, it's hard to do, I know the computers and the internet are slow and things don't work all the time, so don't stress. I'm not sat there ticking people's names off. I think you're all doing a wonderful job, um, and I miss you all. Um, so, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Um, just a short literary lesson today. Quiet, please. Are you just going to talk over me all the time? Is that what? Because I just stopped and now you stopped. Anyhow, um, so I don't believe that. It's just tired. <laughs> um, you should all have been planning and drafting uh, a bit of descriptive writing around storm, and the weather's not been great this week because it's not quite stormy weather. But if you looked out the window, it should have given you some inspiration, especially with the clouds and the, the way the wind ruffles the trees and maybe some of the sounds that you can hear and that, that kind of dark colouring that could give you some inspiration if you look out the window. Um, so hopefully you've drafted or you've written a paragraph or so about the storm that you've come into, whether it's in a diary kind of extract in a first person extract or whether you're just describing it from a third person point of view. Um, and now we've got to look at redrafting, haven't we? So you make a first draft and then we've got to read through it to make sure we don't want to change any bits or to make sure that things don't make sense or are spelt right. People, the children that are in 3D will know that I'm constantly changing my sentence all the time. Even as I'm speaking, I'm constantly changing them and editing them. Nothing that I've ever written has ever been perfect. I've always had to make little changes. If it's just one word or I change the sentence, sometimes editing can be as simple as taking stuff out. If you take away sentences that you don't need. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be adding more work. Some people think editing and redrafting, oh, I've got to do more work, but it can be as simple as taking stuff out. So I'll give you a few tips of what to look for when you're editing and redrafting. And then once you think you've done that, you can get onto writing your final draft and I'll give you a tip about how to do a, a final draft that looks like it came from the Viking period. Archaeologists maybe found this description of your storm. So enough of me jibber-jabbering, let's go and have a look at some things to look at um, when it comes to redrafting. I'm just going to show you this before we get started actually, because if you don't, if you haven't been doing the setting description and you want something to do, Pobble365 is a great website to use, gives you a nice little picture, kind of give you some inspiration with a title. It's usually a short story starter to help you think about it, which you could read with a grown-up. Some questions, and it's got some writing challenges there as well. So this is another great thing if you like a bit more structure to your day or you haven't been doing the Viking stuff, then do this. Um, right, now we'll look at some uh, things around editing. Where are they? Yep. So here are some alternative adjectives that you could use um, if you've used things like the big waves or the loud uh, booms of lightning 
or the angry waves. These are some uh, different words. Not necessarily better because sometimes it's not. We don't always want to use these posh words, but sometimes the words are a bit more descriptive. These are different words. These are synonyms for some of those words. So here's some different words for angry. The enraged. The storm was like an enraged um, child screaming at the top of their lungs. So the bitter winds or the furious winds. So a bit of different words for angry. Um, for loud as well. So you wouldn't use all these adjectives, but... These are some different words if you want to change some of your adjectives to use better, posher words. I'll put that on the literacy Google file drive thing, Malaki. You guys know how to work with the internet better than I do. Um, and then I'll show you some tips that you need to do when you're reading through your work. So first thing is to check your capital letters. Have you got a capital letter? at the start of every sentence. So where does the full stop? Have you started every sentence with a capital letter? Double check that. You also need a capital letter for the word I. I know I sometimes forget that in my emails. The email link site doesn't change it for me. I've got lazy with the computer. And do your proper nouns have capital letters? That's your people, your places, important things, which we shouldn't really have in the story but if you've named people or you've named the boat or you've named the storm then that will need a capital letter um, organization or what we call presentation so does it look neat have you got paragraphs have you got finger spaces have you got nice handwriting can you read through your work if you can't read through your work i doubt that al or your grown up at home will be able to read it have you gone through and checked that you've got all the things that I asked you to do, like expanding down phrases? Are uh, your ideas grouped together? Do you need to put any sentences in a different place? Have you gone from talking about the waves and then in mid-sentence talked about the sky? Maybe do you need to finish the idea about the waves first before talking about the sky? I don't know. It's up to you. These are just tips that you can use when you're reading back through your work paragraphs we've talked about that punctuation have you got full stops at the end of all your sentences have you got your comma after your front and adverbial maybe some people have used short sentences that probably goes in the organization section what about um what was i going to say that ellipsis that three full stops to maybe create some suspense And um, remember, if I'm going too fast or you want to go back through anything, just, just go back through the video or pause it. Um, I'm just trying to get this quick because I've got something fun to show you guys. Um, spelling is tricky because we don't know how to spell all the words. Um, so what I like to do is in my draft, maybe underline words that I know that I don't think are right, and then check them with a dictionary or check them using a phone or computer. Um, ask a friend, ask a grown up. So I'll go through um, those again in a bit. Um, I'll just tell you this last little thing that you can do, which is quite fun. And then well, that'll be all for today. So you're going to be redrafting your work, or if you're not doing that, well, you, you can do the pobble. You can choose anyone that you want to. So imagine that you've redrafted, you've got your final piece, but you've got loads of scribblings out and crosses and brackets, and it's it's all a bit of a mess, but you know the order in which it's what it's to go like. You've got to write it out in neat time you now, so it looks like a good um, piece of writing. And there's a little trick that you can do to make it looked like it's from the Viking period, like an archaeologist found it. You can get your piece of paper, and you can dye it using um, tea. I'll show you what that looks like now, I think. So I will pre-warn you that you will need a 
Um, probably a, a grown up's help if you're going to use hot water, you might be able to see the steam. But it should work with cold water as well. You <coughs> need to, <coughs> pardon me, borrow a tea bag. Some of you may already know this trick already, but if you don't, then um, lucky you. This is a technique to make your paper look really old. Now, I would do this first before um, you write your neat copy because the water will smudge all your ink. So you get your paper that you're going to write your neat copy on, and you get some hot water or cold water. If it's hot, make sure you've got a grown-up. And you dunk the tea bag in so it starts to brew. And that orange, burnt orange kind of colour that tea goes when you put it in a mug is great for. Let me just check if you can see this. I'll just check the video. I think you can see my table here. Put that a bit more. I've got my tea bag and I've been dunking it in some water. Make sure you're not going to make too much of a mess. It is water and tea. It will just wash up. Make sure you've cleared all the electrics and stuff like that. I feel like I'm on blue pizza. And you just want to dab and kind of paint your um, paper with the tea bag. And you'll see that it's starting to go brown. So you want to keep doing that so it's all nice and brown. I won't do it. Um, you'll go out and do it a lot better than I'm doing it. Hopefully you can see that it's gone a bit brown. So then your paper is going to be quite wet. So what you want to do... you want to do then is to either put it in a, a dry place like a boiler room or I've had the oven going so I'm going to put it in the oven for a bit I'll recast some stuff and then hopefully I'll show you that it's but you can see there already that it looks a little bit more like old paper that's been dug up Super. I'll leave that in the oven for, keep watching it in the oven because the paper will burn so I wouldn't advise putting it in the oven, I'd probably put it in the boiler room or above a radiator if it's not dripping wet. Um, again make sure you're not going to ruin anything, it, it shouldn't cause too much of a mess because it's tea but... No. Check that all babies aren't present either. <gasps> um, so yeah, that, that should be done in a, in a couple of seconds. We'll recap the thing, check your capital letters, check your organisation, your presentation, check your punctuation, check it all makes sense, reread it, maybe get a, a friend, get somebody at home to read it as well. But if they're struggling with little bits, that probably means that you need to edit it some in some way, shape or form. Check all the spelling that you can do. The obvious spelling should be ones that we really... Um, keep for a lot of um, and it's, it literally takes two seconds and it's it's done now on the dry and you can see it looks a bit old now it's been dug up so then I could write my proper copy onto there my final piece um, and then after that if you're really careful you can maybe rip some of the edges off and so it looks like it was all, but make sure you don't rip any of the writing. Probably rip the paper first, then you know that you can see the edges there look a bit old as well. Super. Yeah, so I'll, I'll leave that guys with you. Try and get a final draft together. Try and make some old Viking storm sagas. That's what the Vikings called their stories, the sagas. So you're going to tell me a little bit of story about the storm. Um, super. Um, crack on, guys. Um, let me know how you get on with these. Be careful if you're using hot water again. Be careful if you're going to use something like a, 
um, an oven to um, dry them. They don't need they need a couple of a minute max in the in the oven, but make sure you get somebody to watch you. Don't do it on your own. Um, get your parents' permission and all that jazz. Uh, I'll leave you with that, guys. All the best and have a good weekend. I will see you next time. Goodbye.